First thing you should get done after lifting is wheel alignment. But in this case, it's easier said than done. Why does this alignment give you such a hard time? For that, we need to understand the fundamentals of alignment itself. Funny problem is that a lifted Gurkha with a roof carrier doesn't fit into your small wayside alignment shop. You need to find a bigger one with an open bay. Since the spacer pushes the lower joint out and down, it upsets the steering axis and throws the wheels out of alignment. So everything's going to be in the red immediately after the lift. But don't worry, persistence is the key and you will eventually get the alignment done. But we'll first understand some basics of alignment. The wheel is attached to the steering knuckle or the spindle. The knuckle is attached to the truck body only at two points. The upper control arm through the upper ball joint and the lower control arm through the lower ball joint. During alignment, we are trying to orient the steering knuckle within this large wheel well cavity in three dimensions. To measure this orientation tangibly and uniquely, we define three different angles. The yaw angle of the wheel, which is called the toe, which shows how much the wheel is in or out of line. The second is the roll angle, which is the side to side roll, which is called camber. The steering axis which is a line connecting the upper and lower ball joints about which the wheel turns on steering and its inclination to the vertical is called caster. While that was the traditional way of understanding alignment, I would like you to visualize the idea of alignment as not the orientation of the entire wheel, which is difficult to visualize in 3D. Rather, let's reduce the problem to just two points. Alignment is only how the upper and lower ball joints are aligned in space with respect to each other. That's it. Holding the upper ball joint at the same place, if we move the lower ball joint away from the vehicle sideways or towards the center of the vehicle in sideways, we are changing camber. And if we move the lower ball joint towards the forward of the vehicle or the rear of the vehicle with respect to the upper ball joint, then we are changing caster. And if and if the ball joints are rotated about their axis, we'll be changing the toe. Now it's easy to see how these three parameters are coupled to each other and it's difficult to change each in isolation without affecting the other. That's why alignment is always in a range of values and never a single value. So during lifting, if you're going to affect the relative position of these two points, you're affecting the alignment. Now I'll show you something interesting. Notice how the upper control arm is mounted on the body. The front end is higher uphill and the rear connection is lower downhill. This upper wishbone or A arm is inclined with respect to the horizontal. This is called brake dive geometry and is provided because when you slam the brakes, the front end nose dives and all the weight is going to mount up on the front suspension. This inclination achieved by the brake dive geometry is going to counteract that brake dive effect by the inclined UCA giving a reverse reaction to the nose diving vehicle. Due to this inclined mounting arrangement, the upper ball joint will not move vertically down during wheel travel and will actually move with a slight forward bias. Now remember our initial bonnet line and hence the body was raked with the nose down at that time, this brake dive geometry was at a particular orientation with respect to the body then. And an alignment was done in the stock truck based on that angle. Now, after the blue garage lift kit leveled out the bonnet line, the brake dive geometry orientation has also rotated along with the bonnet line. This is another reason why the alignment gets difficult after lifting. The second reason is the upper control arm is mounted further outboard with short arms and the lower control arm is mounted closer to the center line further inboard with longer arms. Now with lift, both arms are held down at an angle. So along with the spatial variation, there will also be an angular misalignment between the upper and lower arms. We are going to adjust these bolts and move the lower control arm out or in or about to align. Now this lift kit came with a UCA ball joint spacer. With all the understanding of alignment we have now, it's easy to see how this piece helps the UCA ball to move down with relation to the LCA ball and hence helps us recover some of the camber and caster we lost when we forcefully push the LCA ball down and out using the strut spacer for achieving lift.
The advantage of this spacer is that the ball joint on top maintains some semblance of vertical alignment with the lower ball joint and therefore makes it a little easier for us to get the alignment back on track. In my previous video, I talked about how live axles are more forgiving towards lifts because of the articulation. I want to revisit that point quickly here. See, in IFS like this Gurkha, the CV axles are kind of half shafts and that moves the wheel just up and down. So there is limited articulation. In live axles, the wheels on either side are rigidly connected by a solid beam. So the wheels not only move up and down like this, but also are able to lean in and out like so, just like kids on a seesaw going up and down. This gives great articulation advantage. While I miss the solid axles of the past, modern IFS suspensions have indeed come a long way with great on-road and decent off